So here's a battery I made when I was eight years old. Basically, it's a voltaic pile, which is its copper anode and a zinc cathode. And whenever you put it into a, an electrolyte, I used a, a, a salt water. I filled it with salt water, and, and then it generates electricity. Only about like 0.9 of a volt or whatever, and not many amps. But it, it is a simple battery. Not counting this kind of means a lot because it it's the first battery I ever made. But today we're going to experiment with using table salt, iodized table salt, and we're also going to be using Epsom salt as an electrolyte. And we're going to test about test out about it, and also see if it's a, going to be a good rechargeable battery. Because I just don't know if, if the chemistry will work that way or not. Well, let's see. So we have a boiling flask with about 600 milliliters of warm water in it, stirring on my corning stirrer. And we have about 25 milliliters of table salt. Let's add that. And we'll let that stir for a bit. Well, I think that's about done. Looks like it to me. Let's pour it into our cell. Okay, so now that we have the cell filled with the salt water, here's the battery. Copper is plus, zinc is negative, or in other words, copper is anode and zinc is cathode. So the voltage is 0.84 of a volt. Now, let's try to charge it, the battery. With 1.7 volts. While trying to char charge the battery with a sodium chloride solution, just corrodes the plates and it falls down as like a yellow dust. But let's turn off the power and see where the voltage settles down onto. So the voltage has dropped down to pretty much exactly one volt. Let's try to measure how many milliamps goes through the multimeter whenever I short circuit the, the cell. 50 milliamps, that's not bad at all actually. But I say we do a uh, discharge test. And let us sit pulling power until it gets down to like 15 or so milliamps. So it just now hit 30 minutes. And it's pulling 5 milliamps of current. Let's check the voltage. Hmm. <laughs> Voltage is, voltage is a bit low, so after discharging, it's struggling to get back up to 0.7 volts, and it's very yellow, very, very yellow. You can see it all got down there, and it just started forming and falling down, and the plates are pretty black. Now, let's set it at 1.7 volts. Actually, let's do, yeah, 1.7. And... Let it charge for a bit. Well, that does not look like it's charging at all. <laughs> or I mean, if, even if it... Oh, look at that! Yeah, that, that that's not good. That means it's basically corroding the plates. So, salt... I mean, it may be rechargeable, but you're gonna kill all your plates. So let's stop that. <laughs> See how far the voltage goes that back down. So... Salt as an electrolyte does not work because it starts just to eat up all the plates. Let's empty that out, clean up the, the electrodes. Yeah. They're not looking too happy. So let's just clean that up and I'll get some more water and we'll make a new batch of electrolytes, but this time we'll use Epsom salt. Okay, now we'll reset and we will start it mixing and we'll add some Epsom salt to it. Now, I actually know that adding Epsom salt will make it rechargeable. I've already done this. I actually spent eight hours filming this and then I had to just <laughs> throw away all my footage because it wasn't good enough. But, uh, but I found out that 
the same amount of Epsom salt doesn't really react as good as salt. Like I used 50 milli milliliters of Epsom salt last time, so this time I'll use like maybe as much as I can fit in there. That was like 50 milliliters there. I'll see if that mixes, and then I'll add some more if it'll if I think it'll hold it. Ah, I'll go ahead and put it in there. There we go. I'm starting to clear up and we're getting a weird like turbulence effect in it. Which is pretty cool. That's awesome. Well I cleaned off all the patina and stuff off the plates with some steel wool so they're brand new. And that looks about done to me. All I got left to do is to fill up the cell with the Epsom salt solution. And now we hook up the negative and the positive. See what kind of voltage we get. 1.081 volts. I believe we shall push up the voltage a little bit more. Now we're putting in 1.8 volts and it's pulling 80 or so milliamps. Which actually is more than it, than it did last time. And that's because I put more Epsom salt into it, so it's more conductive. So after about 15 minutes, it's settled down to only pulling 47 milliamps from the charger, which means it pretty much isn't charging anymore. And now, just like just like the last time I built an Epsom salt battery, it has like a white shadow of particles that are falling off of the copper, but is nowhere near as much as the sodium chloride battery. So, let's bring the voltage down. Disconnect that and see where it goes to and how, uh, what voltage it settles on. It's been about 15 minutes and the battery is hovering around 1.11 volts. So now we will see how many milliamps it'll put through the multimeter. Not bad. Now let's just see how long that'll go. Well, it's been 30 minutes, and it's, and it's giving out 6 milliamps of current. Let's see how, what, the volt, what the voltage goes up to. So it went back up to about 0.7 of a volt. And let's set a time lapse while we charge it. It has been charging for about 15 minutes, and the plates do look, look a little bit cleaner. Although, they, they don't look all that bad. Uh, I, they didn't look all that bad before. Now let's see what voltage it goes down to, and we'll start another time test to see if it, fully, if it did fully recharge. So it kind of dropped down to 1.2-ish volts. And I have to say, I'm really glad because the electrolyte looks very clean. No more flakes falling down and stuff like that. Let's put it into, low, uh, let's discharge it now for another half hour. And 30 minutes again, and it's putting out five milliamps of current. Let's see what the voltage is. It goes back up to about 0.5 or 0.6 of a volt then well I mean I believe that means it's recharged voltage is back up to 0.7 of a volt it takes a charge and as it charges the dull plates should clean up well that's one way to make a rechargeable battery and I'm pretty happy because up till now I've only heard of them being non rechargeable I didn't know if you mixed up some salt with them that it would make it chargeable which makes me curious. I wonder if you mix Epsom salt with other uh, battery chemistries, if it might make them rechargeable too. 
Either way, I'm going to continue experimenting with making rechargeable batteries, and pretty soon I'm, I'm going to be working on nickel iron batteries. So stay tuned, and I hope you enjoyed this video. See you later!